Hey, it's me, PK King, and I love designing characters. You probably already know that. You probably know me from Lodent. You know, Lodent's great, I love him, but he does have a lot of issues, gameplay, animation, design-wise. Not to mention, it took over a year for him from concept to release. Like, pfft, come on, hello? I wanna make a bunch of characters. I can't take a year on each and every character. That's not okay. So when Zeta announces one month character jam, I said hell no and continue working on Mask Man because I'm not gonna be able to do that. <laughs> It wasn't until Dior messaged me and I realized, hey, this could be a really cool video idea. So I sacrificed my entire May for this this video. Okay, so if you don't know, this is basically like every other game jam, but instead of making a whole game in a day or something, you make a fighting game character in a month. If I'm being totally honest, I did not really expect to finish at all. Um, me and Dior both have like full time like jobs and our own lives and things like that. But we decided to split it up. He was focused solely on the code. He did every single penny coding wise every single little thing i didn't touch the code at all i mean the colors and like the css but like he made the character and i did all the art so everything you visually see i did so with that i really do think we have a chance because this prize pool is bigger than most smash tournaments so let's do this <laughs> if i'm being honest the prize for me is the critique at the end there's a lot of judges there of, of, of creators that i drawn a lot of inspiration from so to hear them like just critique my work is terrifying but also really exciting i'm kind of using this as a test you know i'm making sure i'm at the level i want to be before i work on my next oc because i don't want to i don't want to mess that up that was going to be mask man mask man was going to be my test but i guess this character and mask man can both be my my figuring things out character Okay, so in this video, we're going to go over everything from the concept to the winner, so let's just get started. Okay, so the jam was announced in April on the 6th, so we already knew the jam was going to happen in May a month ahead of time, but we didn't know what the uh, the theme was going to be. We actually got to vote on what the theme was, which was pretty cool, so me and Dior tossed around a couple ideas depending on what the theme might be. We were thinking about like Wobbuffet, we thought like an RB uh, RPG character with like skill increase and mischance. I drew up this idea for a dumb beetle that I still kind of want to do so don't fucking steal it but the last one that we came up with was a stance character now as the animator I did not want to do a stance character that's like three times the work no I this is we have a month no but we kept talking about it and talking about it and the idea kind of stuck so I thought okay I'm gonna have to get creative with the design because I'm not animating like three different idols that's not happening okay so it's finally May we didn't get to talk until the third because again we have our own lives going on um, but by then, Dior had described to me a clock system that he made, where you would cycle through your elements after doing a move, and each element like changed your stats and your moves and things like that. I really like that because I didn't want to do... Obviously, Rivals has the four elements, of course the character's stances are going to be the four elements, but I did not want to do like, oh, down B switches your element. Like, that's just lame. That's just so lame. I, I liked it being a little uncontrollable, a little random, and having to kind of figure it out on the fly. So I really fucking like this clock system. So we tested a couple stuff, like if you could change moves to become multi-hits depending on what stance you're in and things like that. And I was also thinking of a way to show the character switch stats without having to make whole new sprites and everything. But we didn't even know like what the character was going to be. Most Rivals characters are some sort of animal or have some sort of fighting style, so we had to figure that out first. So in looking for like unique fighting styles, um, Dior brought up Capoeira, which is like a sort of dancing, fighting type style, and I thought that was so cool. So for the animal, we wanted a character with like legs, like a character with legs. No, done. Oh shit. We wanted an animal that like has really pronounced legs. Like we wanted it to be focused on the legs. I didn't want any punches or headbutts or anything. It was all gonna be kicking. It was all gonna be kicking. So, Dior thought of the owl, this owl, this specific, I think it's the barn owl, because they have really long legs for a bird, and I thought the idea of a bird that just like kicks and stuff like that, like, I don't know, that's cool, I like that. So with that, we had all we need to start getting started, so go ahead and meet Alara. Alara, because Alara, like, I don't know, I kind of thought it sounded like owl, like Alara, owl, Alara, owl, like it kind of sounds like owl at the start. And then the ending comes from Capoeira, so Alara, yeah, you get it, you get it. So her design is a little odd, just let me explain she's a barn owl i said that already she got spots on her on her stomach on her chest and they're the same color of her eyes also they have a little like red orange ring around their eyes and to me that kind of looked like makeup or something which is why i perceive her more like feminine and also i don't have any, enough 
woman character, so she's a girl, okay? Originally, the idea for the elemental change indication was that she would have a belt, like, tied around her waist, and I would make that the perfect sort of bright green color, so in the code, Dior could change it to be any color that he needed to, depending on what what the element at the time was. There was a couple issues with a belt specifically. Like, for example, she's an owl. I knew I could cheat a lot with like some of the, like maybe like the dash, she can just be flying, just to save time because again, we have a month. <laughs> we have a month. <laughs> so I didn't want her to cover up the belt at any time. I didn't want a frame of animation where you couldn't tell what element you were. Like that just seemed like bad design to me. So I took away the belt idea and I'm like, okay, I need to figure out something else. And this is when I started to dive deeper into the things that we already dis established, like capoeira. I did some research and I found out that it was actually made by slaves in Brazil who would train fighting, but like mask it as dancing. And that like blew mine. That, I don't know, that's just so interesting. And I, I'm so happy that we ended up doing this because I, I could work with this. So hear me out, this is a slightly messed up idea, but I was thinking she can have chains on her feet because, you know, yeah. Now that might sound bad, but that wasn't that wasn't the only reason at all. That was like the last reason. I kind of made the chains look like arrows because the whole clock motif that I thought I would dive in more into, but we'll, we'll get into that in a sec. But it also makes sense because owls have these sort of tags like on their ankles when they're domesticated. So like it, it's just like it's just like those those trained owls, and it makes sense that that you know these are on their ankles. But lastly, if I'm being dead honest, the main reason was because she kicks. I wanted the kicks to show the smear of, and the color of what element you are. So she kicks forward, you can see the smear because the color of the element is on her ankle. So it just made sense because otherwise I would still want to put the color like in the smear, like in the background and it would just kind of look weird. So this was a really, really, really good excuse. Now if I'm being honest, I had no idea what to do with the head. Like it was just a circle and I didn't like that, like it just looked so empty i didn't want to put like hair on it or something like i don't know i just i just couldn't figure it out for a bit so i decided okay i can go for like a, a hat or something so i went for like a brazilian headdress of sorts i made it more metallic and reflective because she's already made of feathers like i don't want to just put more feathers i think having multiple textures is a good thing and also, I've been working on Mask Man a lot, and I realized that animating like reflective, shiny stuff is just fun. I think it's fun, and it can be a lot more um, rigid and not move as much as like other flowy things about her, because everything else about her is re really, really flowy. So having something more rigid and stable was really good. I also put like two gems on it just so you can again see the element just in case for whatever reason the ankles are covered or you're not looking anywhere or like, I don't know whatever reason it's there there it's just more I kept her overall color palette pretty simple because I knew I made that mistake with loading I gave him way too many colors so I said nope you get like three <laughs> and also if there were too many bright colors it would muddy what element you are and I wouldn't want that to be like difficult to see so besides the bright yellow shiny everything else is pretty dull Okay, okay, I'll get into the moves now, but I do need to talk about the main gimmick um, that's outside of the whole element switching thing. Most, if not every rival's character has some sort of stage control. Um, originally, hers was going to be a boombox, like something that plays music, and the song that's playing is dependent on what element you have, and it does different things, blah, 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 blah. But after more research, like I said earlier, I learned that the instrument they played during Capoeira is called the Berenbao. It's like a stick with a with a string attached to it, and you hit it with this other stick when it also has like a little shaker on it. It's cool. You can also cup this part to your body to change the sound when it hits. It's a really interesting instrument, and I really wanted to use it, but I'm like, how? How? How do I? Is there gonna be another owl in the background like playing it? Like, how am I even gonna like animate this? <laughs> so I decided to kind of double down onto like the vague elemental magic thing and have it just control with the color of the element. Don't ask me what this is. It's just vague magical elementalness. <laughs> But you can see it's cupping this part and it's stringing this thing, so it's playing it's playing the music. I'm honestly really happy that this turned out. I just hope I'm accurately and positively like portraying and like representing uh, this culture right because this is so interesting. Like I 
I literally just fell into holes just researching and watching and reading stuff like this. This is thank you, Dior. This is you're fucking brilliant. <laughs> oh, and speaking of Dior, he was hard at work during during this whole thing with the code. He's constantly sending me updates and videos and asking my opinion on things. He's fucking cranking it out. He's doing incredible. But mind you, this is still a time to think. So at this point, it's about the eighth, and I'm done with basically all the movement, which I was pretty proud of. First week, I'm done with the movement. I thought I'm doing pretty well on track um i did take some some like little creative liberties like here and there <laughs> like i made her head twirl for some of the moves just to kind of quickly turn it around but also to kind of reference how albums turn their head 360 i know this is a different kind of 360 this is not how it is but i thought it'd be funny and it's a 2d game like whatever it's just, just a game jam cut me some slack also on the back of her wings i gave her this little design to kind of look like a face i know that's more of a moth and butterfly thing but i thought it still looked cool anyway again during this dior was sending me clips he finished up the fields and he was asking my opinion on those and exactly what they should do and blah 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 we came up with a couple ideas that didn't end up switching that much at all really the fire if you hit it on time it explodes the earth if you're inside of it it doesn't change your element the air changes up gravity so you're all floating weird and the blue water one slows down your momentum and your when you're in hit stun so it's really really good for combos all of these have a limit if you use its ability like too many times inside of it then it will break for balancing reasons obviously but these these didn't really change that much these were pretty good so during this time i'm working on the other stuff like the portrait i think i did that before but i was working on just other hud elements and blah 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 and it wasn't until the 11th when we actually started talking about the moveset in depth i already had a bunch of ideas trust me um i was looking up references and i sketched out a bunch of things i had a bazillion ideas um which most of them changed um like a little bit like some of them just changed for time reasons like i just didn't have enough time to animate the whole thing but most of them actually were stayed kind of the same if i'm being honest the moveset wasn't too complicated i figured the elemental changing thing would already be complicated enough so i really just tried to make a bunch of different unique kicks because kicks you can only kick so many different times right <laughs> right <laughs> No, there was a million references online uh, from a couple different fighting styles, but they all kind of still fit the bill, um, and it was very, very engaging information. <laughs> I honestly didn't have really much ideas for any of the other specials, so me and Dior dragged his roommate into the call because um, a lot of the ideas that I had were similar to Penny because I really like Penny and I think they, they play a little similar. Also, I didn't want any projectiles on Alaire, I wanted this to be a close-up character. Um, and Penny is really similar to PM Lucario, which Dior's roommate plays competitively on Twitch, go check him out by the way. So we, again, doubled down on that. Um, the down B was already placing down the Baron Bow, so we didn't need to worry about that. So we kind of stole the neutral B, which is the command grab, um, and then the intangible dash for the side B, we also just kind of stole that. And the up B, um, I kind of wanted like a zero suit, like up B kick, but I, I really liked this specific kick. I hope I found a video. I'm going to hate myself for making me find this video, but this specific kick. Um, so the up B is just kind of kind of go straight up, maybe even a little bit back because you know not don't need to have the best recovery so by the 12th i got the jab and the tilts done um we decided the crown shouldn't have a hurt box because she was already pretty big herself and she doesn't attack with it so um we just didn't give a hurt box to it and everything was going pretty okay some issues like would pop up um because when we actually fully implemented the changing of the element it was a little laggy at times because just too much was happening at once so we changed it to actually be more accurate two o'clock so instead of changing every like tick every move it would change like on every six so it would give it more of a clocky feel and it would give you more time with each element like once you have it this was a beautiful decision this was great on the 17th this is important i finished up all the strongs and the nair but i specifically did a lot on the 17th because i knew things were going to start slowing down dior's glasses broke so he couldn't work on it as much that week until he got a new one and uh for me <laughs> I turned 21, so I was out of commission that whole week starting the 18th. <laughs> it wasn't until the 24th when I actually played the character for the first time, which now that I think about it is kind of funny. <laughs> and it was upon playing him for the first time I realized Dior is such a sweet little soul, okay? I didn't give him the dash animation for that whole month. I, for I didn't put it in the folder. I forgot, I guess. I missed it. And he just assumed, oh, he'll get to it soon. And he didn't say anything. So I get the build of the character and I'm like, where's Dash? 
Anyway, we fixed a lot of stuff, and um, on the 25th, I fixed all the aerial stuff, as well as the six different hurts. I changed the jab, um, and I changed um, things for the down B. I added the tom, which is really cute. Look how tired she is. Oh my gosh. And I added a platform. On the 26th, I did up B. Um, I did prat fall. I did neutral B. I did forward B. Neutral B is honestly probably my favorite move. Um, it's a command grab, and different elements toss you in different directions. I had to kind of hit from everywhere because I didn't want to do four different animations, so I I made it like close combat like kind of like star after like that was my first thought you know just beat them up beat them up um and the the element like slashes them so you can see which element you are so you know which way you're going to fly if you know that um but i thought this was really cool on the 28th i started work on the ui and we really had to simplify this because originally i did way too much it was too big it was too complicated so we simplified it a lot and it started looking pretty good um i did the victory portrait like background thingy and i really love this this is so pretty i love this and i also did some other like little polishy things like the break animation for the Baron Bow, I did the animation for the field, things like that, things were looking good. This is when we actually started play testing. Uh, we put it in the play test corner and we started getting some feedback. Oh, that feedback was super good. Dior was playing him a bunch, other people playing him, giving us their input. It was great. Um, I started working on the trailer at that time. Please watch it. I spent a lot of time on it. I really, really love that trailer. Please go watch the trailer. There's a lot more information on her there. In the last like two to three days, it was just bug fixing. Um, I, I made, I already made a bunch of alts before but i changed some of them and i made some new ones Dior also made some new ones i added a css and boom it was it was done just like that now all in all i'm super proud to be and Dior. i think this was incredible and this was super fun and i'll definitely do another game jam sometime in the future or character jam whatever you call it in the future but i do i do want to talk about my my things with Lara. based on the feedback we are going to go back to Lara and make some changes um I'm gonna redo some sprites and we're gonna have her have like a full release um, and I'm also planning a stage that will be very fun but for now I want to talk about like my own opinions on Lyra. For theming I think we did really well I think this is pretty unorthodox for all your stats to just change out of nowhere and for you to have to adapt to them I think we did pretty good there. The art it's definitely better than Lodent. I definitely learned a lot and the importance of like range and silhouettes and unique startup and diverse movement But I'm I'm still not fully there. It's way too fluent. It's way fluid like not in a good way It's too it's too like just like ugh. Nothing is like solid enough like the smears are really inconsistent and weird um, The posing is just kind of weird at times. I think I looked at the reference and took it verbatim I didn't properly like put it into like a 2d fighting game Game. that is on me but also I did not have the most time to do that so that wasn't really my focus that wasn't really what I was trying to improve in this but it's definitely something I'm taking note of and I will definitely improve with my next characters I didn't realize this until um I started working on mask man a bit more again but the thing with mask man is he has like proper disjoints like he has weapons he has his wings he has like metal stuff like he he has a lot more I guess what I'm trying to say is weapons read a lot more clear to me I feel like I do better when like the character's weapon isn't their body like when they actually have a weapon and they're not punching and kicking there are moves that i love like like f and down tilt dash attack the smash attacks kind of near uh but most of the animations are just too busy uh it's just too busy <laughs> so honestly i won't take things too personally if my art isn't the best thing but you know i still think i learned a lot and i'm excited to start working on mass man again polish i think we we're okay um we added a lot of like visual effects at the end there was like portrait art and like theme like saw like music that plays at the end of it things like that there weren't many bugs as far as i know um i could have polished up the art more but i feel like in other regards the polish was pretty there and then game field was a little split because the intentional lack of control over the elements was either like a really cool fun thing or a really bad annoying thing. We tried to have some ways to control it like the earth baron bow and seeing your clock there and only certain moves changing your element at certain times. But it was just too much to learn, especially like if you're judging a game jam and you just kind of, there's like 30 other characters you need to look at. It was a lot. It was a lot. I think it was overwhelming. And even if you did take the time to learn it all, it's a lot to constantly think of during a match. I do think that could have been streamlined a little more, but I think the base that we have right now is perfect and I still love it. And the last category is creativity. I hope that this video shows that this was pretty creative. Uh <laughs> But, um, 
I don't know. I, I, I think this is the one we have the best shot at. <laughs> I kid, I kid, but if you want to look at the other entries, they'll all be in the description. They're all incredible. Here are some of my favorites right here. Um, it's just so cool to have partaken and just be on this list of all these other characters that had like joined in this event. I'm I'm so like thrilled. I didn't end up winning. Duh, look at these. <laughs> that wasn't really the point. <laughs> I still feel like I won, okay? I feel so confident and motivated working on Mask Man. It's cool to have another character I'm proud of under my belt besides Zoldan. Like, this, just in, it, just in one, one, one month, one month, at least the art, just for me, the art at least, in one month, that's crazy. So if you're watching this and you're like, wow, I can never make a character, I can't draw or code or I don't know how to blah, 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 yep. Quiet. Stop it. Yes, you can. Most of Load and I did the code for. Unless you want to do something crazy spectacular, you really don't need to know how to code that crazy much to, to do the basics. And the art, if I can do all the art in a month, you'll figure it out. You got this. <laughs> yeah, you know, Loden took like, like six months to do the art, but this time it was one month, so you can do it. <laughs> and I didn't really focus on the moveset that much designing the character. It wasn't, it honestly isn't too well designed, so I wouldn't really have much to say there. <laughs> I know a lot of people say they're not good at art or code, but I think the real problem is seeing the full scope of the whole process. You know, seeing the start to the finish, the whole entire thing is very overwhelming. So I hope in doing this you can kind of get get a pace and kind of kind of see how it goes. I just hope you see my process for my character jam and hope it motivates you a little bit. I'm not saying it's easy, but trust me, just get give it a try. Give it a try. At your own pace, of course. I'll probably do more jams in the future, but this is it for a while. I'm working on my 2021 path. It's changed a little from the last time you saw it, but I'm planning Mass Man for sometime in August, and these two should be at Zeta's Next Direct. More info up here about Zeta's Next Directs, or in the description if I forgot anyway. Um, <laughs> I would really like to make more character, uh, more videos like this about character concepts, even if I don't make them into full fighters, because just talking about like designing characters and my reason for them is really fun. I like it. That's why this video is so long. I just realizing, wow, that's that's a little long. <laughs> but anyway, that's it for me. You can leave now. Go ahead and play Alara. Um, she's out. Obviously, she's she's 100% out the jam version at least. Link in the description. Watch her trailer if you want more info. Read her Steam page. I love her. Send her some love. Send everybody in the game jam some love. Download the whole game jam. Like subscribe to all of them. They're all incredible. Um, and follow if you if you're interested in more character design stuff. I love this. This is so much fun. I'm definitely gonna do more. Um, and Mass Man, more info soon. Thank you guys. I love you guys so much. Thank you, Zeta. Thank you, Dior. Follow his Twitter. Anyway, I love you guys. Have a good one. See you tomorrow, next week, next month, in August, in September, November, December. Yeah, I love you. Bye.